welcome our Radcliffe College alumni whose intellectual legacy we celebrate in today's Radcliffe Institute. When alumni think of Radcliffe, they may think of Radcliffe College, of the Radcliffe Quad, of the Radcliffe Union of Students, of the Radcliffe Institute. We all have different memories and associations, but what Radcliffe stands for still, undeniably, is cutting edge scholarship, a commitment to leadership, to excellence, and to the advancement of the life of the mind in the service of society. When I came in 1964, it was, I think you would say now, quaint. We had Sherry's on Tuesday night. We had parietal hours on Sundays for one hour. You could have boys in the room. Uh, four feet on the floor and the door opened ajar. That was the rule. I had a wonderful time at Radcliffe. There were several, though, who felt we were second-class citizens. All of the classes that I had were male professors. We looked up to the men to, to answer the questions in class. It's really a, a, a whole dynamic that, that, that we had to overcome. The loneliest moment I felt was when I said goodbye to my mother and my sister in Harvard Square to go get in the line for registration. But immediately, people were really nice and friendly. Some of my best friends to this day continue to be people I met in college. My major activity was the Radcliffe Choral Society. The really great point of being here was to be pushed to read things that we hadn't read, to wrestle with ideas or languages or facts. And the whole wealth of the university made a huge impression on me. The Radcliffe story is one of repeated change. In the 80s and in the early 90s, the undergraduate population was quite mixed. My task was really to find a way forward that was sustainable, that was true to Radcliffe's mission and responsibilities, that remained connected to the undergraduates. And this last creation of the Radcliffe Institute for Advanced Study is an amazingly exciting place. It is intergenerational, it is international, it is a place where people come together in every discipline to work together and to learn from each other. When I meet Radcliffe alums out there on the road, I am so impressed with how curious and interested they are in ideas. It's not obvious. We embody their spirit of inquiry every day here at the Radcliffe Institute. Push the envelope in terms of storytelling. The Radcliffe Institute enjoys an extraordinary opportunity. It's located within the framework of Harvard University, but it has the independence to take risks. One of the things that has been so striking to me about being at the Institute is the number of incredibly ambitious, fantastic, smart women at the Institute. I've never been at this level of my career in a space where more than half the people are women. It's also a complicated political terrain that you're navigating. Radcliffe represented an early commitment to inclusion. The Radcliffe Institute has been a beacon for those values and those commitments. When Harvard and Radcliffe merged forces, the athletic department asked each of the varsity sports what they wanted to be called. Did they want to be called Radcliffe Crew or did they want to be called Harvard Women's Crew? And we felt very strongly that we wanted to be Radcliffe Crew. You're instantly immersed into a group of 50 dynamic, unique, really talented women all working towards the same common goal. That's really an amazing experience, feeling that strong bond to the Radcliffe women who came before us. Right the turn and I'll tell you when to stop. 
I still feel those band of women all marching behind me and they're, they're all still there and they all still care. Radcliffe College was founded to give women access to a Harvard education and we've come so far now that the Institute now offers men access to a Radcliffe education. And for me this is a kind of success that, that we should all celebrate.